by the time my wife and I pass away, we will end up donating close to 100%. But I do hold most of my cash. I'm not the most generous person. I'm not trying to paint myself out to be a saint. I'm not that. I'm a capitalist, just being transparent. I love making money. I love making money for the sport of it, and I don't know why, but I can't stop. As an NP Digital partner, we at Productive Insights are delighted and proud to welcome back Neil Patel from npdigital.com. And today we're going to talk about profitable scaling, artificial intelligence, content marketing, and lots more. So welcome back, Neil, to the Productive Insights podcast. Thank you for having me. So oh, I, just got back from, uh, I just got back from the UK. Wow. You've been traveling a lot. And actually... I was watching a conversation you had with Matt Gray and you were saying you traveled 35 weeks of the year. You get used to it over time, but right now it's a little hectic because I'm traveling every single week internationally. So it, it was funny because one of my buddies has a private jet and he's this, did you know the average person only takes flights that are under three hours? And I'm looking at my most recent flights over the last 10 flights. And I think my average is a little bit above 10 hours. <laughs> wow. So I'm flying a lot. It's, it's very heavily international though. Like I just did London. I, in a few days I have to go to Germany. Then I think I have to go to Dubai after that, then Romania, then Dubai again. And when I do these trips, keep in mind, I go there, I fly back to the States. I go there, fly back to the States. When I was single without children, it was easier because I'll just go from location to location, which saves a lot of time. But I miss my kids and my wife and my family also misses me. So I go back for a few days and then I'm back on the road for the rest of the day. I was going to ask actually that with a young family, that must be hard. And just to give our listeners some context, I want to put some clarity around the private jet remark because a lot of people would take the wrong idea from it. Oh, I'm flying commercial, by the way. <laughs> I'm right. saying my friend does a private jet was just telling me the average flight that someone takes is under three hours. Thank you for clarifying that. And that's something that I really like and admire about you, which I don't think you do a lot of justice to in your content because yeah. you're so focused on technical value driven yeah. content. So, but like, I've thought about a private jet. India is roughly, call it 40 hours total round trip. I'm rounding here. It's roughly 40. All right. If I get a deal on a plane that can take me far enough, you're roughly looking at $10,000 an hour. All right. Because you have to keep in mind, there's cost for landing and fuel and plane maintenance, putting up the pilots and the crew. You need multiple pilots when you're going to India because it's you need a massive plane because it's such a far journey. But when you just think about that, just for a minute, you're talking about that it means it would cost me $400,000 for a round trip. Yeah. All right. I'm not saying I do this, but if I wanted to splurge and go first class on Emirates, which has a shower and everything, 20 grand, you're better off donating the $380,000 to someone who needs the money than you are to waste 400 grand on a flight that long. Now, if I was Elon Musk or Bill Gates, it probably doesn't matter at that point in life, but I'm not them. For me, I'd rather donate the money. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit. You donate a lot of your money and your wife specializes in this. And I really like that you guys have this sort of combination, right? You're the guy who makes the money and your wife gives the money away a little bit like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. So talk to us a little bit. My wife, to clarify, does not specialize in it. That's what she focuses on. She's been learning quite a bit over the years. But she loves it. It makes her happy. It also makes her cry a lot. We joke is we have, my wife's donation varies a lot based on the tear factor. Uh, <laughs> my friend, I joke with my wife about this. The more she cries, the more she donates. She donates from her heart. I donate based on logic. I'm like, oh, you want the money? Okay, you're trying to solve poverty. How much more kids were less hungry in the last 12 months because of your efforts? Like I look at the stats and the data uh, and my wife genuinely donates from the heart. I'm not saying my approach is right or my wife's approach is right, but a combo of both of them is you genuinely pretty good. Yeah. So at what point did you start donating money? Clearly you're not building. No, a long time ago. When we first did our first interview, I was donating back then. I just wasn't donating as much. Approximately what proportion of your wealth do you give away? Not that much right now. 
percentage of wealth is single digit percentiles, really tiny on an annual basis. And it's actually a very low single digit percentile, just to be super clear. Even when I look at portion of income I generate on an annual basis, I'm donating less than 10% of my income on an annual basis. By the time my wife and I pass away, we will end up donating close to 100%. But I do hold most of my cash. I'm not the most generous person. I'm not trying to paint myself out to be a saint. I'm not that. I'm capitalist, just being transparent. Yeah. I love making money. I love making money for the sport of it. And I don't know why, but I can't stop. And sometimes I wish I could just stop and just be that dad who goes and plays soccer football with my kids and goes to the park that's honestly not me i just love business and making more money i'll spend time with my kids i'll do puzzles with my kids or random stuff you're a gujarati is that correct i'm gujarati yeah so you know i should donate more i'll donate more before we pass i keep majority of the cash for more business to grow and make more money and again i should change that but it's hard right now in my prime when I love what I'm doing. Yeah. And I hope that by me investing more into business, it compounds faster. And maybe at the end when we give it all away, and we still give some every year, but maybe at the end when we give it all away, it'll have a much greater impact. My wife is on the flip side. She's like, people need it now. We should give away more of it now. So just got to try to find a balance. I just want to thank you for your transparency and your honesty. I really appreciate that. I know you also said in the first million podcast that you don't want to just give money away to your kids, which I deeply admire and respect. Can you talk to us? That, that was my biggest mistake in my life. The biggest mistake I made was I put some of one of my businesses shares in a trust for my children as my children are walking around and listening, but they're too young to understand. I put some shares of a company and a trust. I ended up giving them too much. At this point, I don't know what happened, but in theory, my kids will walk away with nine figures each at the age of one and three right now. Wow. So I wish I had put as much in a trust. So when I say I don't want to give them anything, some of it's already too late. I'm trying to figure out, legally, I can't just break the trust is irrevocable, but that was the biggest mistake. Cash-wise, they don't know what they have. Your view is to give away the money where it's needed most. Is that right? That's right. And when I made those changes, I was much younger and it was a big mistake, but live and learn. Yeah. And they don't know about it, right? So my goal is to give it away and for the people running the trust to also use it for nonprofit and donation purposes and instilling that in my children. And I'm not going to be a cold parent and what I mean by it, and that's actually a bad way to put it. I don't think that if someone doesn't give their kids anything, it's not cold. That's actually a very incorrect statement of me to say, but I will give my kids something if they need it. Yeah. And here's what I mean. If my kids are on the street with no food and they're sick, you better bet I'm going to give them a house. I'm not going to give them a house in Beverly Hills, but I'll give them a normal house and food and shelter. Or if my kids have cancer and they can't afford a treatment, I will gladly pay for that treatment. So it's, just, so it's not like they're getting nothing. And more importantly, what they don't even understand, the amount of relationships and business connections that they've already met at their young age is quite ridiculous. Imagine a three-year-old and a one-year-old doing dinner with your friends and your friends are billionaires and they've done this multiple times with different people who have billions of dollars. And I'm not saying having billions of dollars makes you great or not having it makes you bad or good. That's for whoever else to decide. But if you look at it from a neutral perspective, typically people who are that wealthy are usually business owners. All the people I know who are that wealthy are business owners. Yeah. And if my kids want to do anything in their life, they're getting to know these parents who are really well off. The parents are getting to know the kids. The kids are getting to know their kids and their kids are getting to know us. Like they're building an amazing network and a Rolodex at such a young age. And hopefully they'll use it for good. That's correct. You never know though. Time will tell. Yeah. And I'm still bad. Like the other day I was at a jewelry store and it was expensive when it was called Harry Winston. And they had a Mother's Day present for my wife and I, so for me to give my wife. And we shop there, hence they give Mother's Day present like a gold-plated plate or whatever it was, some cookies and stuff. 
My little three-year-old loves jewelry and her birthday's coming up soon. I was like, what's the cheapest jewelry you have in here? And they're like, this pendant for $3,500. I show it to my three-year-old and she's like, I love it. And she's turning four tomorrow. And I'm like, you want it, honey? And then she's like, yeah, she's like, I would look like a princess. And I'm like, here you go. So I'm like, I'm not, I, I'm again, I'm not a saint. I shouldn't be buying a little kid that $3,500 jewelry piece. And I bought her many pieces of jewelry. She'll probably break it after a month and that's it. But like, to see that smile on my little kid's face. And she's oh, I'm going to be a princess for my birthday. And I was like, you go get it, honey. Fair enough. So let's switch back. You started from very humble beginnings. And I want to undo this million dollar this and million dollar that. And everyone's talking about revenue and not talking enough about profit or cash flow, which we'll touch on a little bit later. But you started cleaning toilets in an amusement park. So talk to our viewers about that. And at one point, if I'm not mistaken, you were a million dollars in debt. So let's talk about the really difficult side of business. You're doing a hundred million dollars a year now, but that's not how it always was. And I want people to hear and understand that it doesn't happen overnight. So can you talk to us a bit about that? I'm 38. That was when I was 15 and a half. I was able to get my first job and it was for minimum wage. At that time it was $5 and 75 cents an hour. Technically they were able to pay me a little bit under minimum wage. I don't know why, maybe because I wasn't 16 and it was cleaning restrooms and picking up trash at a theme park. And you know what? I love cleaning the restrooms because when I clean the restrooms, they either pay me extra 25 cents or 50 cents an hour to clean the toilets. It was a really messy job because it's a theme park. You can imagine. Yeah. And a theme park with roller coasters uh, and Ew. big kid roller coasters. Oh, not the ones with little kids. So I did it to make more money. I wanted a better life. So you do whatever for the cash. And eventually I tried starting some businesses. My first one was a job board, failed miserably. Eventually I tried to create a cloud computing company before that was really popular. Before there's Amazon Web Services. From my understanding, maybe I'm getting my timing off, but I'm pretty sure before AWS was big, we were trying to do cloud computing and it didn't work out and burn a million dollars of borrowed money and eventually had to pay it back. So it's like, how'd you get yourself out of that hole? I was doing consulting at the same time and helping people grow their traffic on the internet. So that helped a lot. 